Hi guys, Harry Henning here, and uh, hopefully you can hear me over the exhaust fan. I got two box cars that I'm actually going to be painting up Pensy, and a lot of you guys have asked about spraying and uh, what I use for a sprayer. This is a uh, simple spray gun. It was bought at Harbor Freight, and I use a small. Uh, air compressor with it that I've gotten at Harbor Freight a while back but that's what I'm going to be painting with the paint that's in here is a water-based paint and it is the Pennsylvania boxcar red and uh, it's a double actuated air gun which means you can spray down and push down here you get air as you pull back you gradually get paint coming out so what we'll do is start off by showing you what we got and we'll paint the box car doors it's really not that hard to do it's just a matter of getting your paint right and we'll put a couple of light coats on they don't need anything heavy uh, we'll go through I got a nice consistency doesn't look like it's got big splatters in it it's a nice fine uh, mist is what you want sometimes it takes playing with the mixture to really get what you need so we got a nice light coat over everything and these, like I said, these are going to get decaled up Pensy with the old Circle Herald on them, and I'll show you a picture of that in the video. And uh, kind of the process I go through to do these cars and decaling and so forth. But like I said, a couple simple light coats. We'll let them sit and dry and we'll put a second, second coat on them. Uh, I'll get all this done. We'll come back. I'll show you the finished cars then. You gotta say it takes uh, a lot of time to do these cars, and we don't want to have tiger stripes when we're done. So we'll wind up putting two or three coats on these, to maybe even four, to get them to look really nice when you're done. key is just to take your time and uh, spray away. You just don't want to put it on all at once. You don't want to put it all on heavy. You just want really light coat. This is the one thing you won't get out of a spray can, that's for sure. Now when I'm done, I can come back and uh, weather these cars up. Make sure I get underneath that catwalk. But they don't look bad for the very first coat. Gotta make sure you go a couple different directions to get in all the little cracks and crevices. 
because when you spray this way, you might not get part of the roof walks on the other side. You may look at it this way and say, I got everything, but then you turn it around and you don't. And same thing here, I can look down this edge of the car and see that all these fins are not painted and uh, that's why we want to go a couple different directions. to make for some really nice looking cars. What's nice is when you do a car, you can pick something that you don't see on a lot of layouts. And this will be the same thing we do the spray down. We're going to have to do a spray up so that what happens is spray down this way to get the car you pull it up you'll see the whole bottom side there's nothing on there and uh, we got to get paint on that so we'll get our top side and then get the bottom now we'll come back in a little while and show you some more of the progress all right working on the last of the box car and, uh, Got the back one all done. Uh, this is all painted and ready to go. And uh, now working on the second one. And uh, it looks pretty good when they're done and dried. If I need to, I can go back and coat anything else. The key thing on these is you got these steps and stuff that stick out. You got to go each different direction, but you don't want to do it at the same time. If I go this way on it, I'll come back later and go this direction after I let the paint dry a little. So. Get up under these roof walks. look really good when it gets its second or third coat on it. After I get done painting these and let them dry, I'll come back and I'll show you guys the decaling process and how that's done. There's two different types of decals you can use. You can use a dry transfer or you can use a wet. On these particular ones, we're going to use a dry transfer, which is quite unique and a lot of people don't really see those and uh, I think they actually work better. So, I'll get back to painting this, and uh, next you'll see these on the workbench, and we'll show you the decaling and so forth. Okay, both cars are 
done or sitting here they can dry for about an hour or two and uh, actually probably dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll work on doing all the decals on them but, uh, they came out fairly well and uh, I made sure to get all the different angles on the on the ladders to get underneath of them and around them and uh, next thing to do is uh, decal and, and we'll do a, a flat clear coat over top of that here's the box car we chose for this project all right guys we're back here now now that we got our decals uh, these are dry transfers I'll show you a brief picture of that we got our cars completely painted I got the book set here in front so you can see what the car uh, is in uh, so forth to get an idea where to place your decals now with these, these are these decals are dry transfers. Dry transfers, they get rubbed on rather than dipped in water. And uh, I'll show you how that goes. And uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, these are for the x35 x46 40 foot box cars and uh, as you can see they're uh, in a nice pack these were from uh, their CDS lettering these are out of uh, Canada in uh, actually Ontario um, We'll get started on this, and you guys can see how this works. So what we'll do is we'll get our package cut apart here. And like I say, I like to have reference pictures. It's nice to have the books to use as references. But anyway, these are your decals. They'll like I said, they're rub-ons, so you've got to watch the back of these. You don't want to really mess them up. And uh, look at what what the lettering is on the original car, and kind of place it right about where you need it. Look at it, make sure it's straight. Now with these. Like I said, these are a, a rub-on, and uh, they really are great when they're done. They don't leave that backing film that you get with regular water decals, but these take time and patience to do. If you want to get over to rivets and stuff like that, you need to take your time and you need a, a burnishing tool I find there's a couple different ways you can do that I have this is what's left of an old paintbrush I whittled down the end on a point and you just want to take your time and you'll scratch over top of them some of you might have done this as a kid with some art projects and that with lettering and stenciling and stuff well this is pretty much the same thing but you just want to take your time and when you peel it back you want to look and make sure all of the lettering is off if not it will stay on the page but you got to make sure that you, you take your time and Pull back a little at a time, make sure you got everything on. Keep it flat in place, 
Some people will take a piece of tape and tape the corners. You can do that as well. Um, so just take your time, peel it up a little at a time. And I, I won't say I'm an expert at this, but done quite a few of them I do enjoy it and I'd say overall electrolyte transfer is better than decals it don't take long to do you just got to like anything else, like I said, be patient, take your time, You'll be amazed. And we lost some of the Y somewhere. Didn't see that, so we got to kind of set that back into place. Try to get it to line up. So, that little bit that I missed. And that's what you wind up with. Now that's the Pennsylvania part of it. Once I weather it and so forth, it will look really, really nice. But as I said, you don't see that cut out from a regular decal. <coughs> all right and we look here we got one two third panel off to the side for our herald and we look and it's pretty close to the middle coming across from the pensy place and rub that on and like I said dry transfers they come out nice you just got to take your time with them and, uh, sometimes they look better than regular water decals These are old ones, so fighting a little with everything coming off. So we just work our way on them. And these cars have been sitting for about 48 hours since I painted them. The company recommends, and most of the companies recommend you wait 48 to 72 hours before decaling a car. That allows the paint to cure a bit. And, uh, I do recommend you leave the car sit and cure. Some paints take longer to cure. I you know like our paint that we have at the shop for the tin plate that takes about weeks to cure <coughs> but we got our pensy on there and this will be a nice looking car when it's done but I'll get to working on these and uh, I'll get back to you with my progress little by little like we did with the painting all right now we're down to the last of the decaling on the cars so, like you said, take your time. I've got about an hour or so far into doing both cars. And uh, like I said, you just take your time, work on them. For 
some people they don't like the paint and decal and so forth. Some of them think it's harder than it actually is. But once you try it, it's not too bad. When you get two-tone paint jobs, they can be a little bit of a real-time consuming. But it's just a matter of taking the time to tape them off. And peel this up a little, see how much is still sticking. Got one or two spots. Go back and hit them. That done. All right, we got our pencil there. We'll put in our data that goes underneath. Scratch it off the wax paper. Or it's looking pretty good. That looks pretty good. Anyway, that's what you wind up with. And, uh, got the car numbered and so forth. And next thing I'll do is we'll put a coat of dull coat over top of it and uh, weather it. And I was looking, there's uh, these car data plate here. I'll probably look through my decals and see if I have one to put on there. But overall, don't look bad. It'll run around the layout. And, you know, once I weather it up, look real good with everything else. So we'll get that, uh, get the cars all coated and we'll go from there. Here's one of the box cars without the weathering. And then here's a box car with the weathering. And thank you guys for watching us. You can also find us at Hennings Trains in Lansdale, PA. Don't forget to hit like and share. And you can also find us on YouTube on the Train Shop Weekly from Henning's Trains. And on Facebook at our O-Gage Model Railroading Tips, Tricks, and More. Thank you and have a good night.